Hello, Saxo fans. Episode 25, here we are. So, the project is moving on at a good pace. Things have been a little bit slower lately because I've been doing so much plating for myself and for the people. But I have managed to steal a bit of time on the car. And today's episode is purely about mounting the, ge the gearbox, the BE4 gearbox. Obviously, it's a little bit involved and I talked about that in the last episode. And so, by the end of this episode, what I want is to have everything essentially in place just without an engine attached to it. So um, yeah, let's get on with it, shall we? A slightly unexpected step here in the process. So I went to fit the shaft and the passenger side one is okay I think, albeit I haven't got the wishbone in there um, because the because it was the original one was bent as I said before. And then I fitted the driver's side shaft and it's far too long. So going back through the history and finding out what's happened with these shafts, it turns out obviously they are obviously I knew they were used in there probably third or fourth hand. Um, so going back through the previous owners, um, we've managed to figure out what the problem is and essentially it's this shaft here that is too long. So <clears throat> I wanted to say thank you to Adrian and especially to Steve for um, getting this shaft sorted. So I'm just in the process now of swapping this. So hopefully it needed to be, you know, roughly what that is shorter. So I figure I'll swap this shaft out and then yeah, try and refit it to the car again. So just in the process of doing that now, I've stripped off the boot, 
stripped off the uh, the knuckle bearing arrangement. Yeah, and it's just reverse reverse order on that. So anyway, I'll do that, and then we'll go and try and refit it to the car and see if that looks okay. Hopefully, that will resolve the issue. Okay, a little bit of a faff. I am going to replace these these clips uh, just just for now. That's all I've got. So, but yeah, you can see how long the old shaft was. So, this is obviously still a good shaft. So, if anybody needs a BE shaft and there's one for sale, I'm sure we can split the proceeds between myself and Steve and Adrian. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's go and see if that fits in the car. Okay, so with the drive shafts mounted, um, yeah, there's only one thing left to do really, and that's to sort out the clutch uh, cable bracket. So I didn't put on the uh, the bearing housing here, which bolts onto the back of the block, because obviously there's nothing to bolt it to, so it'll just be flapping in the wind. 
but essentially that'll hold this and just pull this slightly further forward and make sure that the CV here is not sitting against the, uh, the, sh the, sh the chassis. So with that, we need to get this uh, bracket modified essentially because this cable is quite long. So this comes from AT speed, this cable, and it comes with the right little ball here to sit in the clutch fork. This little rubber bit here essentially needs to sort of sit about there, I think. So this bracket, I think, is probably for a hydraulic um, pull mechanism, but it has the right end piece in here, the sort of the right shape. So essentially, I need to sort of cut it up a little bit, probably turn it over, I'm going to mount it off here, which is where I've seen others mounted to before. So the first thing really is to probably cut these two arms off turn it over and see roughly where that bracket sits in relation to the little rubber mount here. So let's get on with that. Right, so as you can see, I've cut off both arms, decided to keep this bit because obviously it comes roughly in the right sort of direction, in the right position. So I've cut up one of the other part spare arms that I don't need anymore. So that's going to mount there. Uh, so all I really need to do is sort of heat this up a little bit, bend it over so it matches the angle of this, and then I can weld that in. And that fits, that fill, get my words out, that actually sort of, puts that in the right position and fits quite nicely I think then. It doesn't help that the cable is probably about 18 feet too long but um, yeah it's the sort of the only one off the shelf that that fits so to speak. So anyway so I'm going to go and try and attempt to bend this it's quite thick so I'm going to have to put some real heat into it uh, yeah and then obviously I can weld that on there. Jobs are good. A few moments later. Right, there we go then. So that's now made, Not a, left a nice big V shape in there essentially so I can get lots of uh, good penetration on the weld. Yeah, really happy with that. That's bolted down here, bolted down there. Yeah, I've obviously kept the original thick steel so that that's once it's welded, that's not gonna be moving at all. So time to bust the welder out and uh, yeah, we'll get that tacked into place. Right then, Saxo fans, that is a BE4 gearbox mounted and essentially working. Um, like I said, so if in the like I said at the end of the last episode when I talked about all these bits, there are other ways of mounting BE gearboxes. Uh, one of the which is essentially you cut all of this bit out and you notch out the chassis frame and you use the satchel kit and that moves the whole engine and gearbox over a couple of inches to give you a better 
centre of gravity. Um, but yeah, it's obviously a bit more welding work involved in that. So yeah, I, I chose this just because obviously it's it's fairly simple and I'm not after all of those sort of track gains and stuff like that. You know, essentially it's a road car with the occasional track day that's yeah not not competitive in any way. But yeah, so essentially if you wanted to mount a BE4, you just need to do what I've done. Um, so let's just run through it all very quickly then. So obviously standard. Um, plate mounting point here with a you know a, a normal sort of mount that you'd use on a saxo albeit that's a nice vibrotechnics one um but the, the key bit is the plate underneath and to cut away a little bit of the gearbox um the casing essentially to make that plate uh, mount flat that's nice and easy i've got an at speed rear mount down the back that's nice and easy it bolts straight to the gearbox casing and straight to the original position on the car that's all rose jointed and adjustable that's nice and easy and then obviously engine mount side um, that's unchanged from you know normal sort of Saxo or 106 um, mount so that yeah nothing really different there so um, obviously clutch cable we just went through a minute ago you need this bracket and you need a pull um, BE4 cable which are available from AT speed There's nothing to stop you you can you, you know you could make one of these brackets it's uh, fairly straightforward uh, linkages so I had a sat shift uh, it, from my MA gearbox, so the original Saxo gearbox, and you can buy a kit, I think it's about £50, to get the two new linkages and the new little pivot bracket there that goes on, and that bolts to the original sat shift, so you can keep all of that, that's a good solution. And then finally, your, your drive shafts, obviously they are different lengths, and obviously I had a little bit of a game with those, but yeah, we've got there in the end. So, um, I think that's about it really. Uh, the next episode, I think, is probably going to be pulling the gearbox apart because obviously it's used. I don't know what condition it's in on the inside, albeit you know it spins over nice and smoothly, it's free and all that kind of stuff. We've got to fit the diff anyway. So if you remember, I've got the uh, the gripper plate diff to go in. Swapping a, a diff on these boxes is super easy. It's literally like four or five bolts. Um, yeah, very very simple. Albeit, I do have to hollow out a little bit of the casing on the inside because the diff is slightly chunkier than the standard one. At that point, I'll also have a look at the final drive and see what my top speed's going to be. Um, and then, obviously, we'll strip it down. Going to help. Uh, Sam's going to help me with that. Uh, and obviously, we'll we we'll rebuild it, repaint everything, plate all the bolts, and plate all the brackets so that's not already plated. Yeah, and then obviously it can sit on the shelf and wait for the engine. So that's pretty much. Yeah, the gearbox in. I'm really pleased with how that went. It was a it was a bit of a struggle at times, but we got there. But I'm really really glad I did this now, and not when it was all rebuilt and while the engine was there and all that kind of stuff later down the line. It would have been a massive headache. So anyway, um, there's a load of load of other stuff to go and do. So you'll see things like obviously I haven't got any brake lines in here yet, so I need to get all those made. I need to get the harness and everything like that sorted out and get that mounted because I cut off all the brackets where that was supposed to be. I need to get all of the wiper motor back in so yeah lots of little jobs i probably won't film much of that because um yeah it's all just sort of lot you know nitty gritty little bits really um but uh yeah i'm pleased with that so anyway next time we're going to strip this down see you then